Hello everybody. Time for our final project. It's going to be African masks. Before I go over it, I just want to thank everybody for their help this year. I think we had a lot of fun projects. It seemed like we had a lot of awesome results. The display case looked good all year. I got some compliments from the principal and the vice principal about how, how well everything turned out. Um, this slideshow is one of the older portfolios put together for Grace, so there is a lot more slides than usual. But we left a lot of the slides in because they show a lot of the different kinds of masks from different parts of Africa. There's a lot of different tribes, a lot of different culture. So we kind of took all that and left some of those in so they could see them. Now their masks were made of wood. We are lucky that we were able to find some pre-cut mask shapes that come with the elastic and the holes already in them. But just a little tip, you don't want to put the elastic part in until the end. Um, once you get through the slides, there is a video embedded in there like we did for the last project. Sorry about that, Amici. Um, at the end, when you turn on the PowerPoint, you do have to click Enable. There's a box at the top that will show that you can enable the video. And when you get to it, all you should have to do is double click on it. Worst case, you just paste the link. The link's listed on top as well. You can paste it into a new browser for YouTube. And you can watch it. It's about three minutes. It shows them dancing around. It shows how tall some of the masks are. Some of these masks go 10, 15 feet high. There's a lot of culture behind it. So they should be pretty entertained by it. So how fast these guys dance with these masks on in the heat. Um, on the cart, you're going to find the calendar. You're going to find the pre-cut masks. We got markers. We got about 16 different color markers. Some of them are really cool. Uh, Crayola had a pretty nice assortment we were able to put together. There's going to be construction paper on the cart along with feathers, glue sticks. The kids also should have their own glue sticks. So if they have them, they can go ahead and use their own. The cool thing about these masks when you see the samples is if the kids want to cut off some of the things to make it special, they can also do that. In some of the samples, we kind of cut off some of the ear and cut off some of the tongue, I mean the, the chin part. And it turned out pretty good. Just a tip though, they can use both sides to color on. These pre-cut masks were a lot more expensive than the ones we usually get. So there's only enough for pretty much every kid to get one. So if they don't like what they did, they can turn it over and color on the other side. There is a little mark on the bottom. I'll show you real quick. On the back of the mask, that does have a real little logo at the bottom, as you can see right there. But the markers color right over it. Um, but they should use the shiny side out first. So just don't have them put their name on it until they're done. Um, another thing, there's going to be some blank white paper on the cart as well to kind of let them color on the side so they can color all the way to the ends. And uh, that would also help keep the marker off the desk. We'll throw some wipes on there too just to make sure. The blurb, you may want to either try to staple it to the side or you could tape it on the back once the mask is finished. But unfortunately, that's something you have to do at the end that will explain it a little bit. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show everybody some of the samples. Here's one. We used the feathers, mostly marker. Now, these parts are pieces of cutout tissue paper. We're, we're probably going to put some tissue paper on there as well. And if you can see here, it's a little hard to tell, but these are actually cutout construction paper glued on. So, it's not just colored. And then the feathers... We went ahead and glued on the back so they look pretty flush with the mask itself. A lot of their masks also represented animals as you guys will see in the slideshow. So if they have a favorite animal, like here we used a leopard. We put some feathers on for the whiskers and then made the spots with the yellow marker. The nose does fold out, they can tweak that out a little bit. If you look here, the chin was trimmed down because a lot of the masks in the videos have a more flushed oval shape to them. Here's another one where we used the construction paper for the hair. So the construction paper glued up pretty well and then we used the, she used the feathers as earrings almost. And you see how the chin's like that. She went ahead and left that as is. But if you want you can always trim it. Another one here where the ears were actually trimmed off to make it more, to just make it more unique. Feathers glued at the top, just different color markers. And the last one here is very similar. The feathers for the hair. We They went ahead and trimmed down the ears a little bit. And instead of trimming the chin, put more like a little feather goatee there. There's tons of feathers, tons of different colors. Real ones, colorful ones. Pretty much the sky's the limit with this one. Um, 
Plus, the kids get to wear a mask, which will always make it cool. So, if anybody has any, I mean, if anybody has any issues, we'll send out the tip sheet along with the link for the video. You can always email me or Melissa. Some of the first classes, if you want to let us know how it goes, or if you hit any roadblocks, go ahead and let us know that as well. I, I think everyone's going to really enjoy this project. I know that there's a lot of parents that their kids are going to be moving up to middle school next year. So again, we want to thank all those people for their help over the years. We're going to need some new volunteers next year. We're trying to think of a way to get it out there. If we can get two for each class, the classes are really easy. The projects have been modified to make this as simple as possible on the parents. So you can have fun even if you're the only person doing the class. But if we can get two people for each class, it would be great. So if you know anybody that might be interested, even if they don't want to teach, you most of us have found that when you do the instructional part, if you had somebody to just help you pass out the papers, it makes it a lot easier. But again, thanks for all the everybody's help this year. We I think everything turned out really great. I'm looking forward to seeing what comes next year. Like I said, if you know anybody that wants to volunteer, we could use all the help we can get. So everybody have a great day.